Wealth, fame, power. Gold Roger, the king of the pirates, attained this and everything else the world had to offer. And his dying words drove a curse. 25 years ago, One Piece aired the very first episode of the anime. Which is now spanning over 1,000 episodes, making it one of the longest anime in the world. So today, in honor of the anniversary, we are going to be ranking the pre time skip arcs. We are! So we're actually coming into this video with two different perspectives because how long ago did you start watching and where are you in the anime right now? I started watching about two-ish, a year and a half ago, okay. and I'm currently caught up with the anime. So I'm on the Egghead Island arc. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that makes sense because I am not caught up with the anime. I just finished all the pre-time skip arc and starting Fishman Island. I started about a year ago after the One Piece live action came out. I'm, I'm excited how this is gonna go with two different perspectives. He's yeah. not gonna know everything that I know. So I just, I'm, I'm excited to see how you have some takes on some certain arcs that, you know, might be more important than they seem. I guess let's begin. We have a standard tier list here, S, A, B, C, D, and F. So we're gonna go with the very first arc ever and it came out in 1999, which is Romance Dawn. This is a pretty short arc, but I, I think it, it does a really good job at setting up what the show kinda yeah. The vibe of the show. It establishes Luffy and it sets up his relationship with Kobe. He meets Zoro in, in Romance Dawn. Yeah. Right from the get-go, we know what Luffy's all about and what he wants, what his goal is, what drives him and his ambition to follow his dreams is just set there right from the start. Let's the not forget about the goat Shanks. Uh, oh, yes. Shanks shows up, so we get to see the classic straw hat scene. Yeah. Very impactful into the show. Also, just a one of the best moments in, in the show as well. I think what we have to do for the very first arc is we have to put it in S tier. Um, I think Romance Dawn is a B tier arc. Okay, I'll, I'll settle with you. We can go with maybe A tier. I, I personally think it's an A tier arc. Just, again, just because of what what it what it does and what it That's sets fair. up. That's I'm fine with A tier. Into high. It's a great start. Great yeah. start. Yeah. So A tier. A tier. Let's settle. A tier is fine. Okay. Up next, Orange Town. Here, this arc. Big fan of this arc because we're introduced to one of the greatest characters in the show, Buggy the Clown. What a classic character. I think he's a great antagonist. You, you know, he's not your guy that's gonna be killing everyone, but he's just a fun antagonist to watch. I really enjoy him. He adds a lot of humor into the world. And we also meet Nami in the- in the Another main Straw Hat. Yeah, Boom. now they're not really the Straw Hats yet, but Nami is the competent character we're finally introduced to because Zoro can't do anything. He gets so lost. Like, he gets lost. And Luffy's Luffy, dumb. Luffy's dumb. <laughs> Luffy's just dumb. And she balances well with all the other characters. And she's kind of like an older sister to to yep. both of them. I think this is a B tier arc. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I think the, when they were on Buggy's Island, what, what was it called? Do you remember what it's called? Orange Town. Orange Town. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of, I think it's in just an average arc. It's just a solid B tier. Arc. Buggy saves it. Buggy. B for B Buggy. B for Buggy. B for Buggy. Syrup Village. So this arc is where we meet Usopp. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I did not like this arc. This one is where One Piece, you could definitely feel the pacing of One Piece. Yeah, at least One Piece anime. Uh, I heard the manga, you know, also a little slow, but a lot faster than mm. watching it. You do get introduced to Usopp. I like Usopp's character. I think he's great. Another straw hat to the roster, but I just don't think this arc is that strong. For me, it was really just hard to sit through when they were in that canyon. Oh my gosh. For, for I, don't, I don't know, 20 for, episodes. Oh, um, that's too much. It was cool meeting Kaya and mm, then, yeah. you know, the Usopp pirates. And we also meet Michael Jackson too. <laughs> Django, <laughs> yeah. that guy, what a ghost. He's just a hypnosis dude. I, I actually liked Captain Kuro in the beginning. And then once he got out of the, the uh, the mansion, then he just became a yeah. silly Billy character where I was like, okay, this is too much. But then at the yeah. end at of the, the arc, end, if you wanna continue. At the end, we get the going Mary. Boom. It's a great ending to the arc, so. However, I don't think the going Mary can save this arc. I think this is a D tier arc. I'm gonna agree with you on that. Oh. I also think it's a D tier arc. A lot, it's just this news fest arc, yeah. okay? Up next, the Baradier. How do you, how do you say you it? Pronounce, let's, let's Barati? Bar I've, I've heard Baratier. everything. Barati, Baratier. How to pronounce. Oh, sick. Baratier, that was the first one. Anime, Anime canon. canon. Bar, ba, yeah. bar, Barati, the Barati. Barati. Did you also make this mistake watching One Piece for the first time? <laughs> the sea restaurant. Hi. 
Baratier. 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 Up next, Baratier. What can I say about this Sanji, arc? Sanji, that's all you gotta say. This arc is amazing. <laughs> Boom, that's how it's done. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, it's just so much happens this mm -hmm. arc. So and much I, happens. We're, we're back to form after a snooze fest of Serp Village. We're back. Yeah, this arc introduces us to Sanji. Oh. And then and then, we Sanji. Get, and then we get the most annoying <laughs> trope about Sanji, which, you know, everyone's got to have their They had to nerf him. They, they, they had to nerf him, or else he would have been too cool. Let's not forget about Dracul Mihawk, oh, the greatest yeah. swordsman. I don't think anyone was expecting anything like that. This is a, your first introduction to a seven warlord of the sea. They just pop world building in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so neat. And you're like, Zoro's pretty cool. Zoro's yeah. got this. He's, he's, he's but, already. I mean, they're kind of pieced up everyone beforehand, right? They have. They, they, there was no real challenge exactly. yet. Exactly. And then Zoro's like, all right, Mihawk, I'm going to piece you up. And turns out we get massive scar on his chest. And that also sets up something else in the future. And being caught up into the show, you're already seeing the groundworks for Sanji's character. Mm -hmm. And you're teased a little bit of what's to come with Sanji's character, because you obviously get his backstory, uh, his first backstory with Zeph, and you're like, wow, that's cool. But you know, there's still some pieces that aren't answered about Sanji. And his backstory is super traumatic, and you just don't expect that. And we understand the theme about dreams and pursuing your, your goals and these ambitions that they're setting up with these characters gets you so invested into their final goal and yep. to what's going to happen and it makes you really attached to the characters. I also really like the Baradia as you start seeing Luffy's like ability to read characters, read people. And he read, you know, from Sanji's upfront lies like, oh, I don't want to go with you. But in, in reality, Luffy knew that he wanted to leave. I'm going to say this is another A tier arc. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I think this is an S tier arc. I really love this arc. I love the atmosphere of the Bradier. I'm I'm willing to settle for A tier though. I, like there's there's some other great contenders. So okay. I I think A is a good spot for the Bradier. Next up, Arlong Park. Holy moly! This is where we get the Straw Hats. <laughs> this births actually solidifies them as a crew. This is a whole new side of One Piece especially with that emotional element, right? And serious tone Like super as well. serious. Like, yeah, there were serious scenes beforehand with like Sanji's backstory, right? But Nami, do, like straight up stabbing herself and just crying, it just breaking down. That's a whole different side of One Piece. Yep. And that really, it establishes itself as not just a cartoon, but it's like, this is something to be taken seriously. And there's more to One Piece than I guess most a people would think. A flashy cartoon. Yeah, exactly. I think Arlong Park is where you finally see one Piece's strongest elements mm. in its, you know, storytelling. And then Luffy yeah. showing up with the hat, giving it to her. Yeah. And then you get the sick walkout with the four guys yeah. ready to storm Arlong Park. Once you get to this arc, you're like, all right, I'm locked in. Yeah. You're locked in. I thought Arlong was a pretty good bad guy. He was uh, a pretty good, like, he was probably the first uh, solid, a, a solid, like the big bad kind of. Besides Buggy. Besides Buggy. Obviously. Right? I mean, Buggy's the big bad. Yeah, right? yeah come on. <laughs> um, I think this art, yeah, it's, it's you know, I, I'd say this is where we finally see One Piece's str best strides, and I think this is an S tier arc. S tier, I agree with you. Up next, Lobe Town. I really enjoyed this. Arc. I love Lobe Town. It was so <laughs> it was awesome. So it was so awesome. You're introduced to so many more characters. Um, one of my favorite Marines, Smoker. Smoker yep. Oh my gosh. You're introduced to another character that yeah. stops Smoker from attacking Luffy. But we don't know who it is. Who yet, is this or, man? Like, what is but, you're you just know. gonna have like a little lightning flash <laughs> in his face, and that, that's all you're gonna see. And Smoker's the... visible reaction, like, uh oh, I better stop. And <laughs> also, Buggy climbs on top on this arc because he almost killed Luffy. Buggy D go. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. What can I say? He, and he just smiles and he just is like, he just accepted it. And, and I think that also says a lot about his character as yep. well. Right there. This yeah. is the type of person who Luffy is. I also really love in Logetown how <laughs> we finally get the vows, but you get them on the Mary heading mm. towards the Grand Line. Yeah. They all put their foot on the oh, barrel yes. and pledge their dreams. Awesome moment. Awesome oh, yeah. moment. This is the end of the East Blue Saga. This is I the guess, end yeah. of they're all lives. I would say it's A tier. Okay. Let's let's save S for some okay, some crazier okay. arcs. I'm fair. Up. That's you know what I I I'll, I'll agree with you. Okay. Next up. Reverse mountain. Not the strongest arc. Mm -hmm. I will say what they did with this arc is kind of brilliant with Laboon. Laboon! Laboon. 
And then don't you you're also met uh you introduced to Crocus too, right? Yes, um, who was a And then you know later on you might figure out he's actually part of the the doctor of the Roger Pirates. Yeah, like, but what, what the heck? What? Just this is insane. Just um it's, it's a transitional arc. Yeah, yeah it's it, nothing crazy. I think uh, it's a humble arc. Yeah. C -tier? You know, yeah. It's humble. It's it's not it's not trying to be an hour long part. This this arc does but it's not do, serve village. So. It, it's like it's it's like planting seeds for things, yeah, especially with the reunion of Luffy and Laboon. Yeah. Like you said, you know, it's just a transition arc. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's a C tier arc. Whiskey Peak. I didn't like this one that much. Really? Yeah. I think for me, I heard so much about this grand line and how cool and menacing it is. And then we get to Whiskey Peak and it, it just it's not that menacing. I, I think they did the expectation management was kind of poor in that regards. I, I did like it introduces us to Baroque Works. Baroque Works, and we meet Vivi. Vivi, yeah. Well, I, that that yeah. I was never expecting Vivi's thing. You're introduced to this Vivi character yeah. who's part of Baroque Works, but then as the conflict goes on in this arc, she's like, "Wait, let me yeah. join you guys." And you're like, "What's happening?" Right? Really silly stuff. You get Zoro versus um some Baroque Works members. You know, no biggie. Zoro on top. Come on, like what, what's yeah. What are we yapping about? I'm gonna be honest. I think this is an F tier arc. F tier? Yeah. I, I don't think any any works of One Piece is F tier. All right, all right. I mean, uh, I don't know. If you want to put F tier, we can put F tier. What do you I think? was gonna say D tier. Oh, D tier? Yeah, okay. that's close enough. You know what? We can be generous. We can maybe save the F tier for truly, truly bad. No, Loki, um, this could only be our only F tier because everything else is kind of goaded from here. I don't know. I, I don't know. Oh. I, well, there's one thing I don't you're, like. You're gonna put Marine Ford in F tier. <laughs> I'm down if we put Whiskey Peak F tier. Okay. Sadly. You know, you'll say D tier, I'll say F tier. I'll be a little different. I'm gonna say F tier. We gotta have something, right? Yeah. You gotta have the bad to have the good. Yep. Next up, Little Garden. This one also does a lot for for the show and especially with the giants. <laughs> yes, introduced uh, to the Dorian Brogy. We're introduced to Mr. Three, the most menacing bro oh, works yeah, agent. Yeah. I thought he was kind of annoying. He was. He was super annoying. Not my favorite. I do love the scene where the straw hats get trapped in the wax and, and Zoro's just, Zoro's just to, holding. Yeah, he just trying posing. to cut his leg off and he's posing. <laughs> I think that whole the giant cake wax thing was kind of weak. Also, you yeah. know, coming from a caught up One Piece, you know, enjoyer, this arc does a little bit more than mm. I think what you'd say. Some some characters, maybe Dorian Brogy, <laughs> you know, they might play a more important role later on. Well, I mean, you have a different I context might. of the I art. do, yeah. I do. For me, I just wanted to get to Alabasta. Maybe maybe it does come in later on, but for now, for me, I think that it, it's not, it, it doesn't do a lot. It doesn't do a lot. After knowing what happens in the future as I'm caught up, I'd put this into C tier. Yeah. I, I guess it I guess it is better than Syrup Village. I'll, I'll give it you that. It is better than it Syrup Village. It is better than Syrup Village, so. so. Yeah, I think C tier is right. a solid place. C tier. Boom. Drum Island. Oh, this is goaded. Drum Island. We're obviously introduced to the biggest character, most iconic character in One Piece, Waffle. Oh my gosh, <laughs> what a fantastic antagonist. Just kidding, it's Chopper. Yeah, and then also you get Waffle with the Munch Munch fruit. Dude, I, Absolute, I can't I, believe you remember his name. I don't even remember his name. You know, you know. <laughs> We're back to form, I'd say, after some, some snoozers. Oh, yeah. Back to form, new straw hat, boom. Awesome antagonist, Waffle. Meeting Chopper for the first time. His whole backstory is super, super Very compelling. sad, very sad yeah. too. You get the really awesome scene where Luffy's like holding up the, the doctor's flag. Uh, you know, Waffle yeah. tries shooting it down and Luffy's like, don't ever destroy this. This is like a man's dream and everything. And also just, it's just showing Luffy's character more. Just yeah. his, un, uh, you know, unwavering persistence to get new uh, pe people in his crew that he enjoys, obviously. Oh, yeah. He wants to see him succeed, especially with Chopper, you know. Luffy has no business caring about Chopper or Wapple or this conflict, and it decides to bazooka Wapple into uh, uh, yeah, the sky. He, like, come on. And he helps Chopper overcome his insecurity of, like, being yeah. different. And so yep. I think that also helps. And he doesn't care. He just laps. And yeah. he's like, what do you mean? Emergency He's, food. Come yeah, on. You silly. <laughs> <laughs> emergency food. That's why he got it. Uh, yeah, come on. Let's be serious, doctor. guys. Chopper. Yeah. He's either the mascot or emergency food. He's no doctor. <laughs> no doctor. A tier arc. Next up, Alabasta. Okay. Now, calm down. Whoa. No, 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 no. Hold on. The reason why this is not an S tier arc 
is solely because of the beginning portion pacing where they're just wandering through the desert for so many episodes oh. we got finally got to alabasta but you have to wait even longer to meet to actually get to the conflict but once it overcomes that issue it just peaked from there another critique i didn't like about alabasta is that no one dies now that now i think what? i think one piece is a big problem with people not dying what? outside of flashbacks okay right that, that's okay. the only way they'll kill people when pell makes his sacrifice to save alabasta and to save the day by doing his thing and you think he's dead you're like dang what an emotional like that was truly a sacrifice that means a lot my man right two episodes later he comes he's back like, what's up guys <laughs> what's up i'm back did he get uh, hit by like a bomb i or think so? I he, he, he hit a full-on iron man he took it to the sky with the bomb and he survives I'm just gonna name some stuff that show up in this arc and tell me if this is in S tier. You got Ace, Polyglyphs, Nico right. Robin, Crocodile, Bon Clay. Smoker shines a lot in this arc too. Oh yeah. Smoker's justice is different from mm. the justice the Navy goes yeah. by. And you kind of start to see the, a lot of the corruption within the Marine after this yep. arc. And then also Alabasta and Alabasta, we get Smoker finally uh, dubbing the yes. Straw Hats, the Straw Hats. Yes, the ending with the, the of X's Alabasta. I think that was, an amazing reveal and what they did with the at the very end which is such an iconic moment yeah i put that top 10 iconic scenes in one piece one, fantastic oh you're right fantastic. That, that's an s tier moment yeah, and you're, but and ooh, it, i don't know what are we doing? Like, <laughs> don't uh, forget about fire fist ace oh Introduced my to goodness Luffy's brother crocodile boom warlord of warlord. the sea you know coming mm. from experience like wow these warlords have a lot of power yeah. and you see crocodile's influence over the kingdom of alabasta it's oh, yeah. it's grand and you get to see a lot of the straw hats fight yes uh, i think this this is i think the first arc that does a really good job of showing it yeah. and it's the whole stuff we, we didn't even talk about mr prince of sanji, oh, sanji pulling some strings to help out the straw hats yeah. so, you know, I, and also i like i think how... you can forgive the pacing uh, I, I, um, I i think you can forgive uh, the pacing maybe I at can. the start there's there's a lot of you know, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you settle. I'm not mad about it being. We're S -tier. going S tier, baby. That's how it's done. After Alabasta, we have Jaya. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't like this one that much either. This one, I think, going off of the end of Alabasta, which was amazing, to straight to Jaya, and I, I like this does do a cool setup with like I just, oh, it introduces the Blackbeard, and it, it's also really interesting how blackbeard was introduced and he's like an antithesis to luffy with you know they're eating the pie or and he's like this is great and yeah. luffy's like this sucks and blackbeard's like this is fantastic but in reality you learn later on they're kind of like two sides of the same coin yep. they both believe in pursuing your dreams and yep. pursuing it especially with blackbeard telling luffy that you have yep. to believe in your dreams i'd say my favorite moment in this arc is the whole conflict with bellamy <laughs> where you finally see you know shanks's uh, lessons yes. taught for, uh taught to luffy you know you like a man can spit on me a man can laugh at me but as soon as you hurt my friend oh it, it, it's on yeah. and now that you mention it i think this this arc kind of does do a lot of really good subtle storytelling and very nuanced story storytelling maybe a or b but i, I you kinda like i said it. man this is sleeper arc i think it sleeper is arc. sleeper arc right there i'm okay with a tier. i like you a tier i like a tier. you got me Skypea. I liked Sky Island. Not that much. I liked it. It's, it's just set in the clouds, which is so cool. It's in yeah. the sky. More world building. Great characters in this arc. Yes. Even a pretty good villain. I, I kind of liked him. Anel was great. He, I, I enjoyed Anel. I yeah, enjoyed I Anel. think he's kind of cool, but I think that this one kind of doesn't know how long things should be. And I think, Sadly, yeah, yeah. I agree. Like, I think that that's just, I don't think it's a tier but i think it's b tier you know um it's not a bad arc but i think it's not as strong as what we've been seeing yeah and i, I think well i'll go with b tier b tier is a a solid spot for this arc long ring long land i'm gonna keep it a buck i'm gonna keep it a buck s tier arc <laughs> s tier arc i think this is a d tier arc what i also think it's an f tier arc i i don't think i've ever been so disinterested in an arc i this don't is, think this i've is, ever been more interested in an arc. i i don't why, why c tier I, s tier i think you're a hater there was some fun moments like uh i can't believe you're forgetting this is the arc where we meet aokiji as well oh I, oh maybe for that 
I'm willing to bump it up, but not S tier. You're crazy S-tier? for S tier. S for Foxy is super cool. <laughs> Boom. F for Foxy? You Whoa! Go- <laughs> Whoa! No. D for Davey back games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fun, but it's not like amazing. Like, like it's not, and it's not an average arc. I think B tier is average. The lowest I'll go is C. I'm okay with C. All right. All right. I'll take it. Water 7. This is where One Piece starts peaking. Introduction to Frankie. He yep. causes a chasm within the Straw Hat. He does. Oh Steals my. the money. We don't know what he uses that for, but we know that he uses it for his family, which yep. obviously is very telling on his character. This also steps up with some of the most serious and just crazy storytelling Emotional, ever. gut-wrenching. Yeah. With Luffy v. Usopp. <laughs> None of it felt forced. And they've been setting this up too. They have. Like with Usopp, definitely feeling, what does he add? (laughs) We haven't even talked, we barely talked about Frankie, but Frankie's whole redemption arc with Usopp and how he kind of helps Usopp get back on his feet. And it's very poetic that he's the one to help Fix the straw hats. Build the crew back together. He built a whole ship for them, literally. Exactly. It's so poetic. And then the story comes full circle. You get Robin, right? You Uh, you don't know too much about her. Because she kind of just joined, right? Yep. And she means well, but there's like a side of her, like a whole backstory that we just don't know. What's her motivations, really? And what's awesome is all the warnings from multiple characters. Aokiji being like, Luffy, do you know who's on your crew right now? You know that Nico Robin and then Iceberg. Yeah immediately recognizing the name and warning the straw hats against it so you're slowly you know picking up the pieces to who nico robin is and um just rating the water seven arc where do you think it is i think that water seven is an s plus i agree s plus for For super Super. enos lobby another fantastic another great art oh my (laughs) gosh the whole the whole conflict with Robin and seeing her fully get accepted into the Straw Hats by, by yes. saying that she wants to live and learning her backstory oh my, that where she's backstory from was... and learning about this void century that Ooh. more about it and the significance of where she comes and why she yeah. does what she does and her relationship with Aokiji. And then Enos Lobby excels at the sick fights. Mm-hmm. You get Zoro unlocking like the, the god Ashura. You get Sanji's first Diablo Jambe. We haven't gotten a lot of power-ups yes. yet. You know, you're bound oh, to get some power-ups. And gear two is in Gear there. two and, and three. three. And three. <laughs> They're like, you know what? Let's give you both. Boom. Them. Everyone's getting power-ups. Yeah. Soga King powers yeah. up. Like, <laughs> Usopp powers up as Soga yeah. King. Yeah. Like, let's not even forget Luffy versus Luchi. One of my favorite fights. I might add, CP9 is like my favorite antagonist group in the show. Robin's character is fleshed out. Frankie's character is fleshed out. Usopp's character is fleshed out. And the out. Going Mary is fleshed the out. The Going too. Mary is fleshed out. Oh my gosh. And this is also another S plus arc. S plus. S plus. It's way too cool. S plus. CP9 is way too cool. I love him. Post Annie's Lobby. One of my favorite parts about One Piece is seeing the aftermath of all of the arcs, like the, the bounty episodes. Yes, right? One and Piece does really good like conclusion a, segments to yeah, these like big arcs. Alabasta. Exactly. They, they're really good at conclusion. Really arcs. good. You get introduced to the hero of the Navy, Garp. Kobe comes back. Kobe and Helmeppo. Oh my gosh. Glow up of the centuries. Yes. Frankie joining the crew, and it, it totally makes sense why he would join the crew and why he's a perfect fit from the, for the crew after what he did to them at the very beginning. So yep. it comes full circle at the very end with him giving them the Thousand Sun. They bring Usopp back to the crew and how he really has to humble himself. When it comes down to it, that's their captain. And it was so cool seeing Usopp being like, you're my captain. And that's one of the great things about the Straw Hats. And then Shanks meets with Whitebeard. And Ace fighting Blackbeard. Post Enos Lobby, S plus. S plus. The whole Water 7 saga. Thriller Bark. I think the Thriller Bark is kind of slept on. I'm biased towards anything zombie related and it intro- introduces Brooke. Boom. Boom. And Luffy's musician he's been talking so much about. Well, musicians. turns out he's a dead skeleton. Yeah, I will say that I think Thriller Bark is a little too long, especially with the fight towards the end 
with Gecko Moria, I was like, okay. One thing why I really like this arc, I really like Thriller Bark, because Thriller Bark is the first arc where you see the sh where Luffy can't beat the head honcho by himself. Oh yeah. He has outside help and it takes the combined strength of the Straw Hat yeah. to beat this one character. And after they finally defeat Gecko Moria, another warlord comes. Oh my gosh. And you're like, what? Like, and it takes Zoro and Sanji. And, and then we all know eventually that, you know. I love the banquet because you, uh, you yeah. have Luffy, you have Brooke playing the yeah. piano. Everyone's having a great time. And then Luffy comes up and he's like, dude, I know that song. And then Brooke's like, from where? And he's like, Shanks, Shanks used to yeah, Shanks. sing it all the time. Then you finally get Brooke's full backstory. Yeah. And then also, it's super sick that Brooke is the person Laboon has been yeah. waiting for. Actually, like that, just insane. That was... It's just... It's peak writing. I don't think Thriller Bark is an S tier I don't, or I don't an S plus, but I think A is a really strong spot for Thriller Bark. Sabote. This was one of my favorite arcs of the entire show. It was <laughs> jaw dropping and was really emotional and really eye opening to the world of One Piece. Uh, they obviously get jumped by another admiral, the first time meeting him, Borsellino. Kuma comes in also. Kuma just... shows up and then a new character, Sentamaru. Mm. So this arc, they weren't even strong enough as a team to, to take yeah. down one of them. This arc showed you that Luffy is not all that. There are people who can kick, like whip him up, right? And, and just completely destroy him and his crew. And seeing his crew disappear one after the other while he's helpless and him break down was so, yeah. oh my goodness, so gut-wrenching and so, so human of him. <laughs> One of my favorite things of Sabote, we get introduced to a handful of characters oh, that yeah. may or may not be some of my favorite characters in the show. Trafalgar Law, my favorite characters, finally introduced into the show, as well as other worst generation members. You finally meet Celestial Dragons uh, in this arc. Um, and Hachi comes Hachi, back. Hachi, and then you meet um, Kami? Kami and Papagoo. Yeah, whatever. they're like such a meme lords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would say this arc did not overstay its welcome. I thought it was the perfect length. Oh, oh perfect. How did Good we pacing. not even talk about Silver's Rayleigh? Oh, Rayleigh. Roger's right-hand man. And, and see them in the bar, and he starts talking about the One Piece. And Usopp's like, wait, you got to tell us where it is. And Luffy's like, no, don't tell me. And it said so much about his character because one, for one, he just, he doesn't want it easy. He wants to feel like he's earned it. But another thing is that whatever the One Piece is, at the end of the day, part of the One Piece is kind of the friends we made along the way and the journey that it took to get there. As, as cliche as, as it sounds, yes, you know, your, your goal is always there, but oftentimes what it takes to get to that goal and, and who you meet along the way and how you grow is really worth a lot more than the goal itself. Um, I think Sabote is up there as one of the best arcs. Yes. I'd say A tier is a perfect spot really? for Sabote. I think Sabote is S plus. S plus yes. for Sabote. I think, I think perfect length, perfect impact, perfect stakes going in and leaves you wondering what the heck is gonna happen next. Like that's, I think it's S plus, so. I'll, I think we meet in the middle and go S. Okay, I'm okay with that. S for Sabote. Amazon Lily. Wow, what can I say? This is exactly how you would picture and imagine a story where Luffy is on an island of women. We finally meet the final warlord, Bo Hancock. Bo Hancock. You know, I wasn't expecting the, the relationship between her and Luffy at all. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna just say that this arc is wild. And, and the ending of it. Oh um, um, teasing the beaver card, right? Yeah, and where he's like, I need to go help rescue my brother. Boom. Oh. Perfect setup Perfect for the game, next arc. Which is, you know, we'll go with Amazon Lily B tier. Oh. Impel down. I'm torn between SRA. 
I think that it's an A tier. It's a great arc. The reunion between all of these characters, all of these ops that Luffy's <laughs> like had to fight for, now come together to break out. break out of prison. And this prison break arc was super unexpected. And Crocodile comes back. Oh my god. We're introduced to Jinbei. Oh Mr. my god. Mr. Three comes oh back. Von Clay. Gosh. Buggy. Buggy D go. Buggy D go. He's back. He's back. <laughs> they all come together to escape this prison. And you see as Luffy descends into, I guess, the seven layers of hell, right? He eats, he gains a new roster. And it's yes. like, okay, this is a pretty cool roster. Loki, I love the straw hats, but this roster was pretty nasty. This yeah. is an all star roster. This is, you also introduced the Eva. Yes, Ivan. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. I forgot he's part of the roster. And then you it's learn a... Ivan's part of the Revolutionary Army. He flushes that out you're too. You're like, what? And he's, I know your dad. And, and Luffy's like, huh? I don't even know my dad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then my favorite aspect of the arc is the incoming doom, this mm. unending time that's ticking down to Ace's execution. Yeah. And you oh, learn they're yes. not fast enough to get to Ace and impel down. So now they got to break out of prison mm -hmm. and then go storm Marine yeah. for. I think towards the end of the arc, impel down really drags a little bit too long towards the end, especially yes. when he's trying to escape it. Cause they have to go through so many layers. Oh, yeah. You kind of get a little tired from, from seeing all this action. Overall though, Super enjoyable arc. Honestly, great arc. You wanna put it A tier? I'm gonna go put it A tier. Boom. Now one of the most influential, crucial arcs in the pre-time skip era. Marine Ford. This arc is truly one of the best. Just the culmination of the entire entirety of pre-time skip. Everyone is here. Yes. And you actually get come face to face with Ace. Such a funny scene. Ace is like kneeled down, chained up, and Sengoku's like, I'm gonna dox everything about you. Like- <laughs> Airs out the whole, everything about Everything, him. leaks his IP, yeah. his father, his maiden name, his mother's name, boom. And then does the same to Luffy. Yeah. <laughs> and and oh, Buggy D Goat. Buggy D streamer in this arc, of course, streaming the entire war. And then you meet Whitebeard at Marineford, and he's just this menacing guy. And we see Whitebeard's influence over the, the world and how he gathered more than just the Whitebeard pirates. But all these pirates came to help him because he's Whitebeard. I love Marine Ford as well because you see how powerless Luffy is. Up against the big dogs, Luffy's useless. He can't touch an admiral. It just really shows that- He needs so much help. Just Luffy through. needs help. Yeah, just fantastic. I love the whole aspect of them running to Ace, this massive- you know, never and it seems never ending distance between the Whitebeard Pirates with Luffy and Ace. And the Admirals are super hellbent on making sure that they get Ace. And then, you know. We witness Ace's death at Marine Ford. Ace! Then Whitebeard gets jumped mm -hmm. and ultimately passes away as well. Standing up. Standing up, no scars on his no back, scars. dropping that the One Piece is real, keeping the passion going of the great pirate era. At the end of everything, Law comes in. My goat! To save the day. My goat comes back. He comes back. in to save the day. And also, Shanks comes back. Boom! And the most bombshell, like, Kobe might be yapping, running his mouth, yeah. all factual, but Akainu was not having any of it. Yeah. And then guess who shows up? Shanks. Boom. Insane. Insane. Yeah. Where would you rank Marine Ford? I think Marine Ford is S plus. It was a perfect buildup of everything before it and perfect climax of everything. Yes. Yeah. I agree. S plus. It's Marine Ford S plus. And for our last arc, post war. Man, uh, you're coming off a climax of Marine Ford, and I think the direction the show went in with this arc was perfect. Yeah, I you, agree. You slow it back down, seeing how Luffy- Very character driven in this moment. Very, you finally get Luffy's backstory, mm -hmm. and you see what makes him tick, as well as you meet his brother Ace, as yeah. well as his other brother, what we had no idea about, Sabo. They were truly brothers, and yep. so was this character, new character, Sabo, and just seeing 
them being kids and you can relate to it because they kind of do what you did it what most kids do and just playing our imagination and just living in that world of having those ambitious dreams i think post-war is great as then you also you get luffy accepting ace's death and mm -hmm. real and help with the help of jimbei realizing yes. what he has left he has his crew and you you meet the um you see where all the crew's at and they hear the news and they instantly care but like exactly. oh my gosh i gotta go and then you get the the infamous 3d 2y yeah. it was mind-blowing that they would spend six months together some some of them like less than a month like brooke they would train independence of each other separately for two years which is a yeah. lot longer than they've known each other that is true and they would come back to one another i think that shows the loyalty of their crew and how much of an impact Luffy's made on their lives oh, and yeah. what they, they mean to each other. And seeing Luffy put the hat on the rock and was like, I will return once I am better. And he goes off, We Are starts to play, and that, that, that's perfect the end. end. Perfect, perfect end. end to pre time skip. I think, on emotional standpoint, for me, this is an S tier arc. I agree. S tier. To finish us off with that. Now we can go back and see, maybe we can- Yeah, let's change up some things. Uh, Loki, I think we can move long ring, long land up to S plus tier. <laughs> uh, ever since I saw S plus, I was like, that's perfect for long ring, long uh, land, right? I, and Whiskey P, maybe we can move it to D. Let's move it to D, no. let's get no Fs. No, 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 no One Piece is bad. You know what, no One, no piece, one is piece is bad. So that's our official One Piece tier list. Let us know what you guys think. Are we right, are we wrong? We're definitely right. Yeah, we're right though. So, I mean, you know, but, but let us know what you guys think still. Thanks for watching and hearing our crazy takes on these One Piece arcs. Um, I think we did a good job. We'll return in two years once I'm all caught up. But in the meantime, we might, you know, do a little mini tier list. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. You want to say any last words? Um, Yeah, Law and Frankie are the best characters.